What lengths would the average obese person go to lose weight? Evidently pretty far. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you about a study of a new weight loss device. Uh, the study was recently published in the British Dental Journal. Uh, the title of the study is An Intraoral Device for Weight Loss, Initial Clinical Findings. I'm gonna tell you about this study, and then I wanna discuss with you What's wrong with us? Why do we only look for obesity solutions in the way of devices, injections, or pills? Why don't we look anywhere else? Watch this video. I think you're going to be shocked at what I'm about to tell you. This is Professor Paul Brunton, who I'm sure is a very ethical and moral uh, professor and who means well for the world. But also, Professor Brunton would like to get a patent on a device and make millions of dollars. Uh, he's the lead researcher on this article that was published in the British Dental Journal. This study, they took seven obese but otherwise healthy appearing women and they wired their jaw shut with this new device. Now, in the press release, this is the picture that they showed and it looks very small and tidy. But in the actual research study, these are the pictures of the actual device used. Uh, this is a stainless steel titanium device that uses electromagnets to keep your jaw shut so you cannot eat solid food. Uh, there is an emergency release key that in case you have a panic attack or you're throwing up or you can't breathe that you can unlock your jaw uh, during this 14-day study, these people were given a 1,200 kilocalorie liquid diet. So this is just a starvation diet. They wired their jaw shut and fed them about 800 to 1,300 fewer calories a day than they otherwise would need to maintain their current body. So yeah, if, if I lock someone in my barn and don't feed them, they're gonna lose weight. If you put this device, which probably will sell for thousands of dollars, if it's FDA approved in the United States or approved by the, the uh, equivalent agencies in other countries, or you'll probably le lease this for several hundred dollars a week or a month, duh, yeah, you're gonna lose weight if we, if we wire your jaw shut. Nobody's surprised by that. Now here's the results. Uh, you can see that starting at baseline over the 14 day trial period, these people lost a lot of weight. This is the mean, mean weight loss, okay? But on day 14, when they took the device off, you can see from day 14 to, to uh, day 28 at the, on the right hand side of this graph, you can see what immediately starts to happen. Just like with any semi-starvation diet, you're gonna lose weight, of course, because you're not eating enough calories to support your current body. As soon as the semi-starvation weight loss diet ends, you're gonna gain the weight back. So this dental device, it's called Dental Slim. I mean, that sounds very nice. That sounds like something that a marketing agency could have a field day with, right? Try new Dental Slim. You'll lose weight like something's wrong with you because something is wrong with you because we wired your jaw shut. But look what happens is immediately when the device is taken off, the weight is gonna come right back and bring its extra friends. Does this device in any way resemble a medieval torture device to you? I could, I could see this being used on prisoners of war or something so that you don't have to spend as much money to feed them, right? So what's going on here? Why are researchers at universities only interested in devices such as this or injections or pills that help with weight loss. They're not concerned that the weight loss is sustainable. They don't care about that at all. They're not concerned that it, it is a healthy version of weight loss. They're not concerned, obviously, with creating eating disorders, which how could this not create an eating disorder? Every time you gain weight, you're gonna go back to your dentist and get the dental slim put back on your teeth so that you literally are punishing yourself for being a glutton. But no researchers seem to be, at least at the larger universities, no one seems to be interested in doing a study where they educate people on a low carb ketogenic carnivore diet plus some daily intermittent fasting 
they're not interested in that. Why is that? Even though it works just as good, if not better than every single pill injection and, and device out there, it works better. It's more sustainable. The people are not embarrassed because they have this huge stainless steel device in their mouth. They're not tied. They're not a slave to a daily pill or a week, weekly injection. Why are no researchers interested in that? And I think I know why. Uh, I'm a student of human nature. And if, if a young researcher were to go to their department chair and say, hey, I've been hearing a lot about this ketogenic diet plus intermittent fasting. I wanna do a big study with lots of participants and see just how much weight people can lose. And, and, and also, are they not gonna be hungry? Are they not gonna be starving? Are they gonna be happy and satiated and healthy and have beautiful skin and hair uh, and teeth that, do, that teeth that don't have stainless steel devices attached to them? the chairman of that department would pat that young researcher on the head and smile and say, you've got a lot to learn. We only research things that we can get a patent on. The university is interested in making millions of dollars for our department or for the endowment for the university. We can't make any money on a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. There's nothing to get a patent on. So run along, try to find a device or a pill or an injection that you can research for weight loss. Because weight loss is hot, no doubt. That's a great topic. But fixing weight loss permanently, so there's no recurring uh, profits to be made, that's not gonna help our, our department and it's not gonna help our endowment and it's not gonna help me as the department chair to get a patent. So I'm not interested, so shut up about keto and intermittent fasting. I put a link to the actual research study in the show notes down below. Uh, just read through it. The, some of the comments and some of the data data that they collected is just farcical. It's, it's, it's funny, but it's also very, very sad to see the state of obesity research in modern society these days. And then if you're really interested in long-term sustainable weight loss, for those of you who are overweight, obese, or morbidly obese, check out my Keto 101 playlist and my Intermittent Fasting 101 playlist. I will never be able to get a patent on either one of those. I don't make a penny uh, from any kind of patent or copyright. If you watch those videos, I get a little bit of ad revenue, but you get a lifelong education in how to lose weight sustainably and healthily and keep it off for the rest of your life. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.